So when it comes to learning pen testing, there's really only one skill that you truly need to learn, cultivate, and master. Now it's true on this channel, I do cover a lot of the finer detailed skills, the technical skills that you're going to need along the way. But on the macro level, there's only one thing that you really need to cultivate in order to be successful. If you don't develop this skill, what's going to happen is you might see a lot of success even still in the short term, but very quickly, you're going to self-sabotage. You're going to set yourself back. And ultimately, even if you do eventually get to your goal, it's going to be a lot longer and a lot more difficult of a process than if you really focus in on this from the beginning. Now, as you are learning these skills and you're trying to develop yourself in the area of pen testing and red teaming, eventually, and it's only a matter of time really, before you are ready to start applying to those jobs. And even if you're not there yet, you're definitely going to want to start getting them in your mind, plant that seed. And that way, when you are there, you are that much more prepared. Yes, I am talking about the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace your next interview. I have that for you down in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the skill that I'm talking about here is that of resilience and grit. And now before you click away on the video, I'm not going to just say try harder, bro, or anything like that. Let's really break this down, what this means, and how do you actually develop it if you don't feel like you have it currently? Because this is a skill that, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Some people are going to find this easier than others, but this is definitely a skill that you can develop if you don't have it yet or don't have it to the level that you want it yet. Now, the most important part of this is to go beyond just the try harder mentality, you know, that we that we all know and and despise or love, right? Let's think about your why. You know, why are you into, you know, why are you learning pen testing in the first place? What is your what is your driver? What is your motivation behind it? I find that if you take a little bit of time to put some thought into this, and really get clear on why you're learning this, that can do wonders for helping you stay motivated when you don't feel like doing the work. So really getting clear on that is the very first step, the preliminary step here, because that could actually fix a lot of these issues that you might be encountering. You might not even really experience much uh, pull in the direction of, of giving up and quitting if you really have that strong sense of urgency of like why you need to learn this, why it's important to you. And that's a question, to be honest, I cannot answer for you because it's going to be different for everyone. Just to put this all into context, my why was when I was first learning this stuff, you know, I would see all the time on TV, on the news, on various platforms, I would hear about different hacks that came out and I would hear about the urgency of cybersecurity and just how huge of a thing it was. And I wanted to be on the forefront. I wanted to be on the front lines of that. So that's what really drew me towards pen testing. I just, I didn't want to be someone that was just involved in cybersecurity. I wanted to be someone that was involved in uh, discovering these vulnerabilities and uh, carrying out these attacks and simulating the adversary. Once I learned I could do that, you know, I just thought that was really cool. And I remember growing up, I was always, um, I would always side with the with the villains. I remember there was this uh, this musical festival uh, in Pennsylvania that um, we used to go to every year, and they had a lot of little skits and and plays and games that you could play. I remember this one in particular. It was a play, and you could choose to be on like the knights side and like the good guys or like the the bad guys. I would always choose the bad guys. I just thought they were cooler. And growing up, I used to watch Tom and Jerry. I used to always root for Tom. And uh, yeah, I always thought it was really cool, um, the adversarial stuff. And um, then when I found that, hey, you could do this as a career, you know, I said, absolutely. And to be clear, I don't do this because I want to, you know, damage companies. It's quite the opposite. I want to simulate the adversary so that I can make the company stronger and more well prepared uh, if and when they do, you know, come under a cyber attack, right? So... That for me, those things were my my motivating factor. Maybe you guys have like a really personal reason of why you're pursuing this. That's going to really help propel you forward even when you don't want to do it. When I found this was a career path, it really resonated with me on so many levels. And I knew like this is exactly what 
I need to do. And even if you guys don't see cybersecurity as like a, I knew that I had to do this moment, you could still probably find some good motivators, some good reasons why you want to learn this. Now, the second part to this is that you just have to understand that you're not going to want to do it every day. And if you look at anyone that's successful in any field, the key distinction between them and everyone else is that they had grit. They had some grit to them and they didn't always have to get positive feedback in order to keep going, in order to keep learning. You got to look at this kind of like an RPG, you know, you're going to level up over time and you're going to, you're going to gain experience points and you're going to gain skill points and things like that. And you're not necessarily going to win every single battle. And it's completely fine when you don't, it's not a matter of, you know, being, you know, like 24 and oh, like a, like a prize fighter or anything like that, right? Well, let's be honest, they sparred along the way and they lost probably some of their sparring matches and stuff too. But it's it's about um, being able to, when that loss comes, when you, when you lose, being able to pick yourself up again and move forward. That is the key uh, determining factor ultimately in the long run. If you're going to be successful or not, the why and all that, that's just to help make this easier. But ultimately... Grit and resilience is what will carry the day for you. Now, for a lot of people, you know, they'll start something and they will have, you know, have a bit of success in the beginning, get some quick wins maybe. And after a month, they quit. You know, most people, I would say, if they're if they're pretty determined on it, if they're pretty interested in it, let's just say, most people will pursue something for between one and three months, three months being like on the high end. Now, why is this, right? You know, maybe they even have like a decent why behind what they're doing, but it's because they do not have resilience and grit. In the beginning, maybe they were getting some wins, they were getting some positive feedback, and they're also just riding the momentum of wanting to do it. Because here's the thing, anyone can do something when they feel like doing it. That's not the hard part. The hard part is doing it when you don't feel like doing it, doing it after you feel like, you know, you're you're not where you need to be yet, you're you know, you're having a hard time, you're struggling a bit. And let's be honest, for anyone that's pursued this field for any amount of time, you know that the struggle is just a part of the game. It's always going to be difficult. It's supposed to be. Um, the hacking stuff is things you're not even supposed to be able to do, right? So it makes sense that it would be difficult. And even for someone that is a professional in the field, I'll say that I experience this every day where it's really difficult. And you know, you have to dig deep and find that resilience and grit within yourself in order to push through and be successful in what you're trying to do. And a lot of times when I found the greatest vulnerabilities that I found, it came right before I almost felt like giving up. So what you'll find is that if you are one of the few people that have, de you know, can develop this or harness this resilience and grit within yourself to keep going, a lot of times that's when you're on the cusp of a big breakthrough. So that could be right around the corner. So if you don't have this naturally where you are persistent like that, and even in the face of failure, you will continue uh, despite any setbacks, you can develop this. And the way that you develop this is to, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's going to be a little bit difficult in the beginning. So the way you develop it is by doing this, you know, on a small scale consistently and just scaling that up to a larger scale. So what do I mean by this? So what I would say is that if you, you know, let's take the example of a CTF, you're working on a CTF, you're hitting a wall, it's really difficult for you. Reach that point where you would normally give up, where you'd normally quit and say, you know what, I'm going to try this for an extra 15 minutes or an extra 30 minutes or an extra hour, whatever amount of time. Just push through that much longer in your head. If you know, there's an end to it, it will be a lot easier to continue on. What makes it really difficult is when we are doing something and we're just pushing through and there's no end in sight. That is when it's at its most dreadful point. So give yourself an amount of time, time box it in the beginning, you know, say, so I'm just going to spend like this extra amount of time on it. And, you know, you may find that you have a major breakthrough there. And once you start having those breakthroughs on the, you know, after pushing through a little bit, it's going to click more. It's going to be more real to you. It's going to make more sense. Um, you know, maybe you went for a test and you failed it. Say, I'm just going to try it one more time, you know, or two more times. Right. And see if you want to go from that. If you still don't 
pass it at that point, then make a judgment call if you want to continue or not. But just this ladder approach to just building it up more and more and more, starting small and scaling it up. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you're going to be, you're going to have so much inner confidence in yourself because imagine if you've been in this, in this position time and time again where your back was against the wall and, you know, you pulled it through due to, you know, just working hard, grit, resilience, and all that stuff, right? I mean, take breaks along the way, most certainly. Um, don't burn yourself out. We'll talk about burnout in an upcoming video, so don't worry if you're concerned about burnout. But just on the topic of resilience and grit, you know, you can scale that up to eventually uh, getting to the point where you're able to achieve anything that you want to achieve and you have that inner confidence in yourself, but maybe you're starting as a level one, back to the RPG analogy, right? Maybe you're a level one or a level three. We got to build you up to a level 99 uh, elite, right? So if you want to get on that path, then definitely uh, start scaling up that resilience and grit. Start small. Don't be afraid to start small and uh, and build up from there. So hopefully this helped you guys. If you want to get into some more technical content, start applying what I'm saying into you know, the real world scenarios, then definitely go ahead and check out some of the technical content that I have on screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.